Hey, this is a belated SmackDown review for the 27th, and I was really ready to slate this show. I mean, I'd already pretty much decided what I was going to see. Um, as I've intimated before, I feel SmackDown has gone from the best show in the WWE to actually the worst show. I think ECW is significantly better than SmackDown. Uh, I think the fact that storylines aren't allowed to be furthered, the fact that SmackDown seems poorly edited at times, and there's just not a lot of care going into uh, the SmackDown product, which has left it sort of stagnant, uh, moribund, if you will, show. But that wasn't the case of this episode. This was okay. This was good. This was... This was entertaining. This was very entertaining. So, we started off with the Money in the Bank uh, type match. And I'm going to have to look at my screen here to describe who was on each team because it's counterintuitive. Uh, we had CM Punk, Kofi Kingston, Mark Henry, and MVP. That's right, Mark Henry is on the face team. Versus Finley, Christian, Shelton Benjamin, and Kane. That's right, Finley and Christian are on... Uh, the heel team, don't mind much about Finley, I think he's a dick, but Christian, yeah. Um, you, you all know, if you've ever seen one of my videos, that I'm a big Christian fan, and if you haven't, you know now. And uh, for once he didn't steal the show here, which I was a little disappointed at, but you can't win him every time. For me, he should definitely win running the back. He is clearly the most credible main event contender, but... Basically what we're looking for in the build up to these money in, for the Money in the Bank ladder matches who's who comes off best from each of these matches. Um, and today the main contenders for me didn't come off very well. Christian, as I said, didn't steal the show. He was okay, he was average. MVP got dominated for this entire match. Shelton Benjamin was barely in this match. And CM Punk CM Punk looked the best. He had a flurry of offense, he was doing really well. Uh, he looked like, yeah, this is the guy they're definitely pushing towards it. And then he's the one who takes the pinfall. Uh, so the guy who looks the best, I'll tell you, the result was basically CM Punk came off with a flying clothesline. Uh, Kane caught him, choke slammed him, and got a clean pin. CM Punk seems to go uh, a lot of clean pinfalls to people's finishing moves that other people don't sell, just kick out of. CM Punk has to take a lot of those. Um, but yeah, the worrying thing is that the person who came out most strongly from this match is Kane. The person who came out most strongly from the VIP lounge was Kane. Got that massive pop on ECW, and uh, then he set his pyro off and left, and he was the end of the show. He was the main event, if you will. And uh, yeah, it was Kane once again. After the match, they break down. Um, you have faces fighting faces, heels fighting heels, so... All that face heel divide doesn't really matter in this rivalry, clearly, which is fair enough. It didn't matter in the match either because Kane tried to uh, attack Finley, who was actually on his team. Evidently, he got confused by uh, the stipulations too. But um, Christian sets up a ladder after the match, uh, w tries to climb up and get the briefcase. Don't know why. For me, Christian would never do something this stupid. Finley comes in, pushes him off the ladder, Christian goes all the way to the outside, falls on top of a lot of people. Christian doesn't get enough credit for the amount of uh, crazy dives off the top of ladders he's taken. In the TLC matches, if you go back and watch them, Jeff Hardy, of course, takes the most crazy stuff. Then it's Christian. He, there's one where he takes a massive spill from the top of the ladder in the middle of the ring, right out to the floor. Uh, not onto anyone, just onto the floor. Uh, doesn't get enough credit for that. But anyway, yeah. Kane comes out well. The only good news is Mark Henry and Finley come out pretty badly. Um, Finley pushes the ladder over. Rather than playing his theme tune, um, they, they play the WrestleMania music. So the winner is clearly not Finley, but rather wrestling, which is a good message. And then we had Jesse and Festus versus the Big Show in a handicap match. Now it's a bad news for a tag team when they are jobbing in a handicap match. That is not the place you want to be as a tag team. Jesse gets sent out of the ring by some minor push from the big show and he's out there for about three and a half minutes and then um, 
basically ends. They, they got dominated throughout. Basically ends when Festus gets the knockout punch. Jesse then gets choke slam, the knockout punch, and the pin, and the massive push of the Big Show as a credible contender for the world title. In fact, an unstoppable contender in the same terms that Kozlov was unstoppable uh, continues. But we all know the fact that the only reason they're doing it is because he has no chance of winning the title. Uh, then we have Matt Hardy with a dog. Not Jeff Hardy's real dog, he's dead, but a dog that looks a bit like him. Uh, it looked a bit like Al Snow and Head. That's all I'll say about that segment. Then we had Rey Mysterio versus Chavo Guerrero. Really, really good wrestling match. Apparently their careers go all the way back to fighting each other in Mexico. I don't really know about that, but I think it's true from what I've heard. Um, this was really good. Lots of good wrestling. Chavo really sold all Ray's moves. He did a head scissor on the outside and Chavo went flying. Uh, and then Chavo also got offense in himself. Uh, a beautiful Hurricane Rana. Um, lots of the usual head scissor type stuff from Rey Mysterio. Lots of high flying, cross body, etc. etc. The crowd really annoyed me during this one because they started chanting 619, 619, 619. And I was like, no, this is a fucking good wrestling match. Let's not ruin it by just having Rey Mysterio's finisher. Just fucking enjoy this, right? Just This could have five more minutes in it. Uh, but I was annoyed because they immediately after this set up for the 619. Don't listen to these idiots. Uh, but Ray misses the 619 and Shavo goes straight into the Three Amigos. Then Shavo misses the Frog Splash. Another little head scissory thing. And uh, then the 619. And maybe, yeah, Frog Splash. And that was that. Um, really good match. Really enjoyed it. JBL comes out at the end, gives Ray Mysterio the big boot, which pretty much knocks Ray Mysterio out. Which is worrying for Rey Mysterio's intercontinental title hopes. Um, also, JBL's dressed to wrestle. Don't know quite what that's about, considering that uh, he was only out to deliver one big boot, but whatever. Uh, they keep prom promising JBL's going to do something historic at WrestleMania. And for me, the historic thing he's going to do is put on the most boring match involving Rey Mysterio of all time. Then we had a John Cena promo, which are not my favourite words. He talks about WrestleMania, he talks about how he is, uh, how he feels like he's on the outside of the storyline with the Big Show and Edge and Vicky Guerrero, and how he wants to get the, uh, put forward the importance of the World Heavyweight Championship, which is fair enough. Um, and it is kind of true, he is on the outside of the storyline, which is so weird, because I feel like he's actually going to win the title, but he is on the outside. Also, it's weird because he a couple of years ago, he was the most pushed man in the company, and he was it, but they didn't seem to care about him right now uh, that much in the storyline, other than being that the cop who does, the ordinary cop who does extraordinary things, which is the tagline to all the worst movies of all time. Um... Basically, Big Show comes out and he's angry that John Cena is belittling his love for Vicky. Uh, and he says that Vicky's love makes him stronger. And that's why he's getting so many victories lately. Which is at least an explanation why the Big Show became so good suddenly. Um, also, it doesn't make Edge stronger. Interesting. Uh, basically, Cena... Once again, he uses heel tactics for me. He waits for the Big Show to climb over the ropes, and then he just pushes him by the leg over the top, and uh, then cheers in the ring. Anyway, turnover for part two. <laughs>